Hello to another edition of Ask EM for Sport. Uh, let me start first with putting a little bit of context in the situation of coronavirus in, in Spain and the return of football, because we were surprised by a meeting between the head of the Federation, Luis Robiales, the head of, uh, of La Liga, Javier Tebas, and the boss of, um, of the government, Spanish government for sport, uh, which is surprising because Tebas and Rubiales don't get on so well. But quite clearly, football needed that kind of, uh, of approach. And what we got out of it is the intention of the government to help football, uh, because football uh, produces is, is a huge amount of money for, for, the, for the state in terms of taxes, certainly, but uh, gives a lot of jobs as well. And basically, everybody is of the thinking that uh, there needs, needs to be a way of trying to finish the season. That, of course, is a total priority for the Federation and for the league, not so much for the government until now. What has come out of it is that um, if, a fo if, if the pandemic continues evolving the way it's evolving, we've just gone in the down curve. The plan for La Liga is to actually get teams started training first individually on around the 4th of May, maybe the 9th of May, the latest, to get even start getting collective uh, work from the 11th of May or maybe a week later. So the dates are not, are not fixed, but the idea is that football resumes uh, either at the end of May or at the beginning of June and use the whole of June to actually... Um, play all the games and leave August for the Champions League. That's something that came out from um, Sky Italia. It hasn't been confirmed, but it looks like dates are um, have been suggested for the rest of the Champions League to be played within the month of August. That is the wish. Uh, that is just another plan, uh, one of many that we heard so far, on how football could continue uh, related to the Champions League and to La Liga. I'm just, I'm just going to look at some of the notes that I've got here uh, that I used actually for the uh, Five Live uh, podcast that we did, uh, the Euro Leagues that we did on Sunday, but I, I think they're relevant. Because the first problem of this return to football is that football players want, need to do it, need to want to do it. And there are doubts. Uh, both Kike Setien and Busquets, uh, the manager of Barcelona and the captain, one of the captains of Barcelona, have suggested that it looks very, uh, very uh, unlikely that players may want to be together as, uh, for as long as La Liga is suggesting. Uh, basically, what La Liga is, um, is saying is that teams should train for about three, four weeks, a couple of weeks in an individual or small groups, then a couple of weeks collectively, and then, uh, if possible, the idea will be to all to be in a place where they can be monitored, where they can be isolated as well from the rest of the world for as long as the league uh, is played. That also means um, tests in the morning and at night, not just to footballers, but to staff and everybody that is involved in the games. The number of people that uh, La Liga wants to reduce uh, to get involved in the, in the match days will be about 100 so that's a lot of tests. And uh, the suggestion is that there will be a private clinic that will do that for La Liga. Um, there is an argument that has been done already to say that if there is not enough tests for some of the people that are in the first uh, line of, uh, of fighting against the coronavirus, why would you be for football? The other side is, of course, that actually there is so much money involved in it, so many jobs at stake, that, uh, that obviously La Liga and the Federation would like this to uh, to be pushed on. But I insist, the players are not fully convinced. They want it to be completely safe before they actually take the step of playing football. Um, as I said, La Liga, to return in that protocol, they suggest four phases uh, for eventually to actually get into, uh, into playing, as I say, at the end of May or beginning of June. Um, I have read that uh, in the United States, they're talking about golf and baseball, to be the first uh, sports that actually will have the opportunity to uh, to start playing, to start taking place in basketball. But um, as I say, that involves testing morning and night. And then what happens if one of the players gets coronavirus? Well, according to La Liga, he will be isolated. There will be tests to the team, but La Liga has to continue. It's all quite difficult. Um, 
so as well as those dates from the Champions League and the league, um, one of the things that the Federation have decided is to actually uh, name those teams that will go into Europe. And that has created controversy as well, because they've mentioned uh, whatever happens, uh, they, they have suggested that uh, UEFA, who won uh, or had mentioned in the past that wanted about by the 3rd of August the determination of which teams are going to go through in case there is no uh, continuation of the league or in case of the league continues played after that beginning of August when UEFA needs the, the names um, of the clubs. Uh, the Federation has said that um, the top four right now, as it stands, will, uh, will go into the Champions League. That means no Atletico Madrid. He, they will go into the Europa League. And also, they changed the rules a little bit to say that uh, the two finalists of uh, the COP, Real Sociedad and Atleti Bilbao, will go into the Europa League. That means leaving Valencia out. So both Atletico Madrid and Valencia have complained. They don't want that to happen. But that's the decision of the Federation, who insists they have the, um, uh, the possibility, they are the ones deciding who goes into Europe. Um, as I say, these dates clash a little bit with the intentions of the government because the government uh, have announced that the state of alarm, alarm will continue until the 9th of May, even though uh, from the 27th of April, uh, all the people and kids, uh, maybe pregnant women, can go out into the streets and perhaps it may give the opportunity for athletes to actually do a little bit of a sport, but that hasn't been confirmed just yet. Now, if that's the case, we're talking about 9th of May, uh, uh, and we are talking about the 4th of May, maybe, or that 9th for the, you know, football to start, or footballers to start training. Um, it, could, it could be fine. But what one, th one thing that the government has said is that that deconfinement will happen in different areas in Spain at different times. One thing La Liga wants is everybody to start training at the same time. So everybody have got the same um, it's just fair that everybody starts training at the same time. So we'll see how they saw that out. I'm sure it was one of the things discussed with the government on Saturday uh, in a meeting that lasted about eight hours. Uh, Barcelona, meanwhile, have um, have looked into predictions and they reckon that uh, they may not see fans in the stadium in the best of cases in November, worst of cases in February of next year. I think uh, playing behind closed doors is something that everybody's... Um, Hoping doesn't happen, but it will. I think everybody's very aware of that. Also, I've heard that um, the Premier League have started uh, talking, um, not officially, but uh, questioning themselves what will happen if the league gets void or gets suspended forever. Uh, because they see the uh, difficulties of actually putting it in practice. It doesn't mean that that's a step they're going to take, but it's a, a step that has been discussed for the first time. Um, in the last meeting, last uh, I think it was last Friday. Uh, we'll see what comes out of it, because as I said, in La Liga, they are very optimistic that uh, things can happen in the direction that they want. So that's um, that's uh, what came out of that meeting on Saturday between La Liga, the Federation and the government, all the things that came out, um, that some of the money that uh, television rights have to still pay uh, La Liga uh, could help rescue all the sports, who are not as rich as football. Uh, they're thinking of creating a, a fund of 10 million euros for the most vulnerable of sports, uh, sports men and women. And obviously, Tebas and Rubiales have promised that they will work together and coordinate it, to which Irene Lozano, the representative of the government, was very happy about, because as I said, they, have, they haven't been doing that so often. Anyway, that's, um, that's something I wanted to come out with. And, uh, and now I'm just going to go for some of the questions that uh, you uh, you suggested. Besko Trajovic, hello Besko, uh, says, uh, will Barcelona pay the reported 111 million euros release clause for Lautaro Martinez, or will they look elsewhere if they can negotiate a lower price? They cannot pay that. As simple as that. They cannot pay that. They cannot pay for Neymar either. So it has to be swap of players. Inter don't say, don't want uh, swap of players right now, could be part of the negotiation. Barcelona can only offer players. And players that want to go. And players that will accept whatever wages that Inter will offer. Very difficult that Neymar comes to Barcelona. Very difficult that Lautaro Martinez comes to Barcelona. Impossible that both of them come to Barcelona. TBKSXV <laughs> says Manchester City have been linked with Lautaro Martinez. Is there any truth to this? And is he looking to live Inter Milan? And when do you think Aguero will leave City? Well, uh, Aguero is staying for now. And we all know that uh, the next step for Aguero is to actually go 
back to Argentina. That's what he liked to do. And in, in uh, no date for it, of course. Uh, I'm not sure it's going to be another contract on the table for him. But in any case, it will depend on who's coming as a striker. Gabriel Jesus simply doesn't score enough goals, uh, not at the ratio that is needed for a team like Manchester City. And of course, they are interested in, in Lautaro Martinez, but no offer on the table right now. The following the, um, the situation with Barcelona, Lautaro Martinez has said, I will leave Inter if I go to Barcelona. That's the message Barcelona got right now. But I understand the fascination for transfer stories, but it's all going to be completely different for two or three years or two or three windows at least. Uh, because there, are, there is a money, basically, um, for, say, we, if the rest of the season gets played behind, behind closed doors, which it will, uh, that's uh, a, a, a lot of millions being lost. La Liga have calculated that if there is no football being played, it could be up to 1 billion euros that will be lost. Um, and if until February uh, we cannot see games with uh, fans, they could, this could mean a loss of 350 million euros combined in La Liga. So that's a lot of money. Uh, and even though players are reducing wages and every club is different, uh, they, there's not going to be the opportunity to do the kind of signings, the Neymars, the Mbappes, the Lautaro Martinez, paying money, paying cash that uh, you expect. I understand still the interest, but things are going to be very, very difficult in this market. Marshi is saying, will Pau Torres be on the move and is Ferran Torres going to Dortmund? Ferran Torres needs to renew his contract and is a priority for Valencia. That's all we have to say. There's nothing else because at the moment nobody's made any offer for him. I got that from Valencia this morning uh, and they hope that he renews his contract. But he's an ambitious man and he will listen to offers. So we've still got to uh, keep an eye on that. Pau Torres not on the move. Villarreal wants to keep him. He wants to stay and he wants to develop at Villarreal. Uh, Josh Mahat, uh, Mahatma is asking, looking back to just before the stoppage of football, what did you make of Pep's tactical masterclass in which he used the same principles with a different execution route against Madrid? Well, it was it was a fascinating game. I reminded myself of it this morning uh, because of the question. And, and it was fascinating for many reasons, from the moment that Gabriel Jesus was used on the left to attack the space that Car Carvajal left behind, in the middle with uh, Bernardo Silva, with uh, Kevin De Bruyne, uh, and that, those would be the uh, the players of front, surprisingly enough. It was surprising as well that Toni Kroos was in play for Real Madrid. But I saw, I think I calculated about seven or eight uh, long balls from Edmilson from the back. Um, uh, uh, from Ederson, not Edmilson. Um, just going to look for the, um, for the lineup because, uh, and the notes that I took on the game, uh, because if I, I felt it felt to me like um, uh, he Bram, Real Madrid or Manchester City expected Real Madrid to pressure high and they had the message not to complicate themselves uh, building from the back, but also they were forced to do that as well. Uh, and once they got hold of the game, uh, despite the fact that uh, Laporta got injured and Fernandinho came on in uh, came minute thirty two and became a centre back, forced by the circumstances and a little bit because. City started to uh, feel more confident, uh, especially at the beginning of the second half. You saw a better Manchester City. And the goals came against the tide. Uh, the first goal of Real Madrid, Isco 59, when Manchester City were much better dominating, uh, keeping the ball for long periods, uh, forcing uh, Real Madrid back. And then the goal from Gravel Jesus, the 1-1 in a minute 77, it actually came on the back of Real Madrid playing the best football. Um, it was the arrival of Sterling as well that changed matters, and uh, and he came in the minute 72. Uh, you could see, uh, again, much more danger coming down the wings. The Bruyne was superb, and of course the, the goal at the end was a reflection of what was happening with the sending off of Sergio Ramos on 10 minutes with the whole of Real Madrid that was hanging by a, by a how do you say, by a thread. They were just about to collapse. You could see things weren't, actual, weren't working the way that they wanted. And then they eventually collapsed in the last 10 minutes with the sending off of uh, Sergio Ramos and um, and the goal of De Bruyne. So it was a fantastic game, uh, one that we want to see the second half of, if you like, the uh, second fixture, the return leg, to see Manchester City through. I think they are favourites for that to happen. Maestro is asking which is best for Barcelona, Bayern Neymar or improving other parts of the team? There's an insistence on those that think like Bartomeu, even Sandro Rossell, former president, but still behind um, the um, behind 
the scenes and and, and suggesting uh, in an interview he did with Mundo Deportivo uh, yesterday that uh, it would be a good idea actually to have Neymar back under certain conditions. So in the contract, it has to say that he's got to behave in a certain way. And so you are asking a lot of Neymar and, and it's fascinating that they are still obsessed about it. But to be honest, uh, he suits Barcelona. He does suit Barcelona. He will improve Barcelona. And if the finances were in place, yes, it makes sense to get Neymar. For other reasons, if you actually think of Barcelona to, um, to defend a certain way of being, certain values, etc., you wouldn't go for Neymar. You'll try to build a team with what you've got and bringing players through the ranks and getting one or two signings. But I think Barcelona is a, is a place right now that has lost direction a little bit. Uh, so anything is possible. But as I said, financially, Neymar, I just don't see it. Saki Bertisen, how did you get the information? Genuine question, agents, players? What do you think? Ben23A says, do you think if the potential new owners of Newcastle Pipe Company with Steve Bruce, Pochettino could be tempted by the project? And I say, I don't think so. Uh, I think Pochettino is in a position where he doesn't have to rush his next, next step. As I said already, uh, I think it would be very difficult for him to get a job now as everybody is staying with what they've got. Uh, There's not time for big changes, but something will appear. Could be Manchester City after Pep Guardiola leaves. Could be PSG after Tuchel leaves. Could be Real Madrid after Zidane leaves. Uh, and why rush a decision right now? They are preparing. I know that they're spending a lot of time with web, web seminars, with uh, conversations, uh, trying to find new ways to do what they do, uh, trying to be at the latest of, um, of technology uh, and, and ways of training, etc. Everybody's working hard. They haven't stopped really that much. Uh, and I know they want to be prepared for when the new opportunity comes in. Newcastle, I just don't see it. Uh, there's obviously, uh, it would be interesting to see what approach the new owners have got for Newcastle in terms of style, in terms of uh, money spent in the market. Yes, the rumour that has reached agents is that there will be money available and uh, straight away as well. So they will be at the, uh, the forefront of, uh, of interesting signings is who's going to go to Newcastle right now. I think the first decision would be to get a, a manager that can lead all that. By the way, uh, I heard that Rafa Benitez have not heard anything from the new owners or anything. So he's miles away from what's happening right now. That's the situation right now. Finally, Los Blancos Sir says uh, Real Madrid no longer uh, contract with Pogba. I guess you mean interested in Pogba. I think the situation of Pogba is that, and I mentioned that already, uh, is that Manchester United want to use the uh, uh, confusion at the moment to renew his contract. And players want certainty, want to know that where they are, they are wanted and they will continue being wanted and, and, and you know, under financial conditions that they're happy with. And Real Madrid are not going to spend money on Pogba this summer. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, as they will prefer to get some of the players that they've got on loan, uh, and maybe get one or two signings, but not much in terms of uh, spending money. Uh, Pogba will be wise to perhaps accept a renewal of his contract and then take it from there. Uh, but right now, the, all the agents I'm speaking to are telling me, players want certainty, just to know that things are going to be okay for them. Even the, the best players, they all want to know that the clubs will be competitive, that, uh, that the, the wages will be fine, that the managers will stay, all that. And that is the priority for the clubs, to give that impression to, uh, to players. Anyway, uh, plenty there, so we'll leave it for now. There's going to be a special Ask Guillem uh, in midweek, so keep an eye on it. Meanwhile, keep safe and talk soon.